Alright, so this is the brain of the early MoGo module. This allows the user to connect and control the glider and its related 4-channel rig via Dragon Frame motion control software, as seen here, and the DualShock wireless joystick. Inside the enclosure, there are three sets of circuits. The high-quality Arduino Dew board with 32-bit ARM processor, the USB shield that supports Bluetooth, and a motor control shield with four-channel step motor driver. On the motor driver chip, there is a large heat sink and a cooling fan by design to prevent overheating. All of the circuits within the modules are open platform, so with some effort, there won't be problems to obtain the hardware. So for example, the DualShock 4 joystick can be found at a reasonably cheap price compared to its quality of performance. This all comes down to this. If you want to customize or if a problem arises within the module, changing the components of the system according to its necessary settings would not be difficult. Alright, let's take a look at the side of the panel of the module. There are micro USB sockets that allow the communication between the computer, the Dragon Frame software, and the module. On top of the USB port, there is the Bluetooth port for connecting the DualShock 4 joystick wirelessly. By using the most up-to-date Bluetooth driver, the range of the reception and stability can be improved. Now we have covered the side and the inside. Let's take a look at the top panel of the early Moku module. The product's name, GlideArm, DragonFrame, and joystick logos are engraved into it. There are also the screw type connected 4 channel output ports and protective covers that increase the stability and safety of the module. On the top right side, there is a DC 12 volt power input port. The required power input will differ by the type of motor installed and the motor driver's step resolution, but to use all four channels, the power source has to output at least 5 amps. Now it's time to set everything up. First, I have connected the early MoGo rigs to each channels. So the first channel is connected to the glide arm, the second channel is connected to the zoom, and the third channel is connected to the focus of the camera, and lastly, the fourth channel is an auxiliary channel, which is connected to an LED lighting. So after the wires have been connected, it's time to connect the early MoGo brain to the Dragon Frame software. So this is done by simply using a Android Micro B type USB cable. And on the side of the early Moku brain, there is a place where you can insert it. And once you have connected that, as you can hear from the computer, the sound, and also on the early Moku brain, there should be a light that comes up. And the Dragon Frame channels have been preset and we have just uploaded it onto the screen, so that was already done before. Now on the Arc Motion panel, add the channels and input coordinates using the Bezier curve, you will find a functioning module. And as stated before, the Dragon Frame software supports the Arc Motion rate. This can be differentiated into two types real-time type and the non-real-time type. With the exception of the Dragon Frame Company's DMC-16 motion controller, all of the other Arc Moco rigs only work in non-real-time type. This is because the movement can only occur to an intended point at one given time using the Bezier curve on the Arc Motion panel. But in the production of a stop-motion film, it is difficult to fill the limitations using the non-real-time control. Our early MoCo also works via the non-real-time method. However, we have come up with a solution to supplement this by using the joystick controller. In other words, non-real-time method cannot manipulate the frames in real-time, but the joystick method can control all channels, autonomously preset multi-phase memories, and give a real-time feedback of the coordinates on the Dragon Frame Arc Motion panel, which in proper situations will definitely have its merits. 
Now that was explained, I'll connect the joystick to the module by pressing the dual shop for joystick's pairing button. Like so. Once the connection has been confirmed, the joystick will control all of the rigs connected to the early Moco Brain module. So, once that's, you see the green light, I'm just going to connect the power, like so, and an LED light should light up. So once you have confirmed everything was connected correctly, you can now manipulate with your joystick. So, on a single joystick. So right now, the glide arm is being controlled by the joystick, like so. And also you can control the zoom function of the camera by moving the joystick up and down, the left joystick. And also you can control the focus of the camera, as you can see right now. And lastly, you can also control the fourth channel, which is an auxiliary channel. And in the case of right now, we have an LED light right now. So I'm just gonna move it side to side using the L1, L2, and the R2. So as you can see. And on the direction keypads, there are two functions. So that you can change the speeds of the movement and the damping rates of the movement. So as you can see, all the movements are synchronized and it is being controlled by the Dragon Frame software. And previously, I have told you guys that you can control everything using the joystick, but now I'm showing you a different option using the laptop. So, let's take a look one more time. So, the movements that you guys are seeing right now was already preset for the demonstration right now. And the camera zoom, focus, the glide arm, and the force channel they were already set some certain movements so you guys can see. And as the movement occurs, you will see a line that goes across, which shows you where, at which point, the movement is currently in. So the interval that we have selected right now is right here, and the movement will occur between here. So I'm just going back and forth between two, the two points. One last time. So there you have it. And I'm just going to show you guys one last time that you can control the motions and also the coordinates will appear here and you'll be able to see the feedbacks and the lines that it moves. So that's the glide arm right here, the blue line. And right now, this is the zoom. Like so, you, just, you see the straight line going up and down and the focus and also the LED light or the force channel of the ray okay. so there you guys have it you can control the early Moco module using both the laptop and a joystick currently the early Moco's motor driver is set for 8 step movements for a 1 point degree turn which in one whole revolution will result in 1600 steps. According to the developer of the glide arm and the early MOCO system, Ji Hun Lee, the motor driver is only using one fourth of its full capacity. Because this setting should be enough to produce sufficient acceleration and deceleration and also accuracy. So after seeing this, isn't it mind blowing? I've yet to see a, such a versatile motion control system in such a compact device. The glide arm and the early MOCO system are probably the most practical and reasonably priced 4-channel motion control resolution out of the market today. 
And with the advantage of the open source platform, evolution will never stop.